What else? What else? What else? What else? What's next? What's next? What's next? What makes sense to talk about next? Hello. I want to talk about the makeup that I just traveled with. I took a trip and I was visiting family for about a week and I didn't bring too much makeup. I was pretty good. It was just a family kind of trip, so my makeup concerns were pretty minimal. I wanted to be like fast with my makeup and not have to fuss too much. And so that's what I brought. I thought it would be interesting not just on like a what did I choose to bring, but also that's all the makeup I used for an entire week. And that's not typical because usually I'm going to mix it up and change stuff. So I've got some good opinions on what I used for that whole week. So let's just start digging in. I think I'm going to start with some lip gloss. Of course, I brought more than just this, but what I primarily found myself using were mostly this one, this Marc Jacobs lip, lip Gloss. I got these from like a Sephora Favorites collection, I think. I've got this one, and I've also got this Marc Jacobs Lip Gloss. So I've got the shade Ra Ra and Pretty Thing. Ra Ra? Ra Ra? pretty thing. Ra Ra was the one I liked more and I'm gonna, I think I'll actually put it on here in just a second and show you. Pretty thing was just a bit too nothing. It was a bit too nude and it just didn't have much of an effect. So I was kind of, mm. and I mean I got it in a Sephora favorites and stuff and I think maybe even this one was just free. So it's not like I'm complaining or upset about that. But I think if I were actually considering buying a full-size Marc Jacob lip gloss, I wouldn't. I like other lip glosses that I have more. Probably the Buxom one that I have, uh, I like the most. Let's wipe off a little bit of the gloss I have on right now. And let's put on this Ra Ra. What I liked about it, I mean, it was easy. So that was important. And I think especially this time of year, lip gloss is nice that way because it's easy. It doesn't really look very nice going on. You know, like that doesn't look that hot. But when you blend it together, I think it looks nice. Yeah, for a lip gloss, I think it takes a little more fussing than most to kind of get it right. But I do think it has a pretty effect in the end. I like that. And I was pleased with it. But it didn't like get into the top of like lip glosses that I want. If it were an expensive lip gloss, I'd probably be much more into it. But since it's an expensive line, I was pretty unimpressed. Nah. That's where we started. I got my, these are, this is like my purse lip gloss lipstick bag. It's, yeah, this is just lip glosses and lipstick. So I like to carry my purse. And I don't even carry a big purse. So it means that's the bulk of what I'm like choosing to carry. It's a cute lipstick bag. It's got lipsticks on it. Oh, I brought this color pop, but I didn't use it. Just because it's this Poppin' Matte X. I brought it because I love it. It is really pretty, but it was just, you know, this ended up being more of a lip gloss kind of trip, and I just didn't bother with a real lip color look at any point in time. So the foundation, or what I used as foundation, is this Pure Lease BB Tinted Moist Cream. I got it in Ipsy maybe Birchbox recently and it was nice it's a little smidge light for me right now but not bad it was nice but realistically I have other BB creams I like more so maybe I'll finish this out maybe I really won't even I didn't feel stuck with it I didn't hate it I mean if I really hated it I would have gone out and bought something else to use so it was nice. I would say one of the really nice things about it is the cream, not the creams, I'm sorry, but like powders that I put on top of it. Everything blended really nicely on top of it. And I would say more than your average BB cream. So if you're interested in it, maybe you'd be interested in it for that reason. But I think it kind of, you know, I have dry skin and it kind of just left me looking like a smidge greasy and just not quite right. It just wasn't one of my favorites. I have other BB creams that I like better. I used this CoverGirl Advanced Radiance Powder on top of it, which I definitely super really like. This is in the shade Creamy Natural. 
which is the only one I ever see in stores. Although I think online I've seen they have a lighter one, and I'd be super interested in the lighter one because this isn't like a this is like a my skin tone shade, but it's not the kind of shade I'd really use under my eyes. And it seems like a nice powder for under the eyes, but I need a lighter one. I think I first came to this because Tati seems to really like it, and she really recommended it, and I do think that it's very nice. I feel strangely like sometimes I have an issue with it where it kind of like gums up and cakes up. And I think the thing is that I really have to do is you really need to blend your liquids down really well before you put this down first. In fact, I'd recommend like after you think it's blended in, you know, give it some more blends with your beauty blender. I'll even like take a tissue over the blender and kind of, you know, blend it in a little further to get any more of that liquid that's up before you go in with the powder. Because I think if you have any liquid that's not very well blended, this will like cake up, which isn't great. But I do really like this. The compact is really easy to use. It's really soft. So a lot of the makeup comes off on the puff, which is nice. So this is the puff that I use the puff that like they sent with it. It works for me. I like pressing in powders that way, and I like it. It's also got a little mirror. I brought some blenders with me, just some blending sponges. I brought brushes, but I don't think that's interesting enough to fully go into. I brought, oh, this is getting lowish. This is a Physician's Formula uh, Plump Potion, and it is something that I use super frequently. This is my second tube, and it's already half out. I feel like I need another one. I wouldn't say it has a ton of plumping. Maybe it helps fill in the lines in the lips a smidge. But what I really like it for is I'll put it on at the very beginning of me putting on makeup, and it is the most stayingest gloss I've ever used. Like, it stays on my lips the entire time I'm putting on my makeup, and I feel like it helps protect my lips from being dried out by, like, any product or powders, you know, coming into contact and trying to funk up my lips so I like it a lot for that you know it just kind of keeps like it gets my lips in a good state that's ready to put on whatever lip color I want to put on when I get to that step so I like this thing this is super used I've talked about this before this is the essence say no to redness and I didn't realize it this is empty I was like scraping in it during my trip to use it to have it's a green color corrector it's a really nice pastel shade that is really nice for fair toned people like me. And I already have a second one, so no worries there. But I didn't know I needed to bring that one because it's that kind of like, you know, and you don't realize when you're like, oh, shoot. And in fact, it's got this like clear thing, like plastic that's holding. So that's why I was like digging into there to get product out. Yeah, this one's officially dead and it's a product I like. I like it. For me, since I like to use the BB creams and the light foundations like that, I, I really like color correcting. It makes a really great difference for me. And in fact, when I've watched my videos, I will notice like after just doing that green color correcting step, I think my skin looks so much better. Oh, uh, well, if we're talking about color correctors, then let's go on to this one. I brought the NYX Dark Circle Concealer. I'd heard good things about this, but it took me forever to get it because I never found one that was light enough. But this isn't fair. And it is light enough. It is fair, and I appreciate that. It's an orange color. See, it's not, there's not a lot of color to it, which is nice. I, it blends in for me better than the Essence ones. So this has replaced what I've been, you know, the Essence. I like it. I think it really does a good job canceling out dark circles. I would super recommend it. I've been using it. I'm going to keep using it. Keeping on board that NYX train. I've got this NYX eyeshadow base. It is a nude colored eyeshadow base. It's darker than my skin tone, but it still works fine for me for the, an eyeshadow base. All of mine, I find crease when I do prime my eyelids. To try to avoid it, I try to wait to prime my eyelids until pretty well just before I'm going to put any shadow on them. So, I don't know. I like it. It's one I'm using right now. I like to apply both it and the Dark Circle Primer with a brush. See, it's probably dirty because I've used it. Like, this little concealer kind of brush. 
I don't think it applies that great straight with your fingers, which is what I've done with other eyeshadow primers. So it's kind of a little more fussy because of needing the brush, but I think that it does a good job. I get, I've get i got quite a bit of veins that you can see on my eyelid. I think that especially happens with more fair tone people because, you know, I'm kind of translucent-ish. So I like to have, you know, the base take care of hiding some of that and just make the color go on nicer. And I'm a fan. I like it. I'll keep using it. The concealer that I brought is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in shade 15, which is fair, which drives me nuts with this concealer. And who's gonna ever realize this? But shade 15 fair is the lightest shade, which is lighter than shade 10 light, which only beauty experts and people in the know would ever possibly know, and they should totally change that, and that is super ridiculously confusing and unnecessary. But there we are. So it took me a while to even know that this shade existed because I didn't think to think that there was gonna be a shade that was lighter than their shade light with their lowest number, but here it is. It's actually a pretty good skin tone match for me because I'm pretty fair. But I like it. It's a good concealer. I used it. I, this is not what I used under my eyes. I'm gonna show you that next. This is what I used just for general concealing and it did me right. I recommend it. I like it. I do have this in two other <laughs> shades even because I have that light shade. And I have the shade darker, which God knows why. I should just find someone to give that to because that's not necessary. So what I used under my eyes, also Maybelline, is the Instant Age Rewind. This is the brightening, which it took me forever to get my hands on for some reason. It's very pinky in color, but I really liked it. I have, you know, I only used it for that week, so I haven't used it maybe a super ton. But I think it's my favorite shade. I have at least two other shades in the Age Rewind because I'm pretty sure I have like the fair shade and in addition to brightening, they have like an illuminating one, which is kind of yellowy. And I'm liking the brightening one. I think it really suits probably like fair skin tones like me. I think if you have a deeper skin tone, that yellow tone illuminating might suit you better. Um, my little sister, she has a lovely olivey skin tone, unlike me. And so when I went shopping with her and she picked one out, I think she leaned towards and got the the yellow and I think she's been liking it so far. So yeah, it's a great concealer. Not the first person to say this is great. It's great. Oh, this sponge tip in case you've never noticed that. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Makes like applying it super easy. For powder, this one's a little confusing. I brought this for my powder, which is the Tarte Smooth Operator packaging this is an old sample that i got and i definitely like the powder the tarte smooth operator powder when it was what was in here but this is not what is in here now what is in here now is the rcma no color powder and it's just if i'm gonna bring a loose powder this is a nice way to bring it otherwise i feel like my loose powders it's a disaster so that's why i've got this i did like the tarte better than the rcma um, which so maybe I'll go back and try that tart one again. It's been a while since that's actually what I had in here and what I was using, but that's the setting powder that I brought. I also brought this wet and wild powder, take on the day mattifying powder, matte about you. It's a lot to say. So you open it up and you've got your little poof that they give you and then you got the powder. And I think underneath that is where they want you to keep the poof. I think that's where it comes, but I don't do that because why would I? I have a dry skin tie, but I still really like this mattifying powder. It seems like just a magic powder that it'll be like the last step I do. So I use the setting powders right after I finish like my concealers and stuff. And then I'll put on other powders like a bronzer or a blush or whatever. And then I might top off my look and finish it with like a little bit of this. You just, and it's like, a very magic simple powder it's wet and wild it's super inexpensive i think this is like the third one i've had i definitely like this a lot much recommend for blush i brought this little one from the balm it's hot mama it is a really nice like basic -y kind of blush it's got a goldeny pinky tone to it it's not too intense it was really subtle and easy to use I never made a mess. I didn't put on too much. It's a really nice, subtle, basic blush. I like it a lot. For highlight, I brought this one that I just got in my Ipsy. It's the Urban Decay After Glow highlight, Powder Highlighter. 
I don't think I've even put any on, so let's put any on right now. So for being Urban Decay and all, I think it's probably a little overrated. If this was an inexpensive powder, I'd be pleased, but knowing that it's a bit more expensive, I think it's kind of basic. It definitely is fine, and it gets the job done, and I'm not looking to get rid of it or anything. I don't have any complaints about it, other than just, I was kind of excited. I thought it would be more special. I think that's really what it is, is it just doesn't seem special enough. It's definitely nice. It just, I feel like you can get as good as this for a lot cheaper. Elf, Wet and Wild, like it just doesn't seem, it doesn't stand out from anything to me compared to those. I like to bring samples when I'm traveling. I'm not the first one to think of that. They're smaller, they travel well. This is the setting spray I brought. The Physician's Formula Insta Ready Setting Spray. It does nice. He's nice. It's got a decent spray. The smell, it's not that bad. It's not that strong, but it's not that good. The other Physician's Formula product I brought is this brow product that has been much loved. It is their Eye Booster 4-in-1 Brow Boosting Kit, which is a bit of an exaggeration. It came also, I guess I'll have it right here, with this crayon. So you'd have like the highlighting end of the crayon, and then this is the one for your eyebrows. This is in the shade Universal Brown. And it's a fine brown shade, and the highlighter, like the under brow highlighter works fine too. Um, but instead of using that, I brought this little B Brow Bar Brow Definer in Cinnamon Spice. It's a slim little pencil and it's nice. I just thought this would travel better than the other thing because the other has those kind of like caps on it and I don't like to travel with something like that because those are just gonna break and come off and stuff. So this traveled nicer and it's a nice shade for me and I'm not too picky about my eyebrows. My eyebrows don't require a lot. I don't like that super full look anyway. Like that kind of painted on Instagram look. I like a really natural full look. So this is an eyebrow gel on this end you've got like i don't use these you got like a comb and that i mean it's, it's like everyone uses spoolies why isn't it a spoolie but this is what it's it's a four in one so you got the two parts of the crayon and then this is i think one of the four things and then you've got the gel inside here and i do like this gel a lot it's one of my favorites it's got a brown tint to it, although you don't see nearly as much color. It's not like the Benefit or the Give Me Brows or anything like that. It's not like a real, it's a gel, not like an eyebrow mascara. And so it's much more like a clear, similar to a clear brow gel that's just trying to hold the hairs in place. So the way I like to use it is I like to brush my hairs up, give them that fuzziness. And that holds it in place. Honestly, I might even like it if it didn't have the brown color because sometimes it can get a little messy and just get on my skin and it doesn't really contribute much to the eyebrows. But as a brow gel, I feel like it's pretty good at holding those brows in place. So that's why I got, that's why I made the cut. It came with. For being much loved and much used, it still feels very juicy. I don't think it's I don't think it's leaving me yet. I brought this e.l.f. liquid highlighter. I like this a lot. It can sometimes be a little futzy and weird to put directly on the skin. I don't use it on my cheeks a ton because it kind of can be weird there. It's very liquidy and my gosh this is a huge tube and it'll last forever. But I think it's nice, where I think it's really nice is on the inner corner of the eye here, which I already had some of this on. I don't know how, maintenance is, how high maintenance is that to have a liquid highlighter just for your inner corner, but it is a really inexpensive e.l.f. product, so it could be way more high maintenance. And then it also can look really cute, I think, on the tip of the nose. Maybe even Cupid's well. But I do think it's, and I've heard other people complain about this, that they don't really like the highlighter, and I think they're trying to use it on the cheek. And I don't think it does the best job there. It can kind of like gunk up with your powders and stuff, but on these places instead, I think it's really lovely. It's golden tone. It's very pretty. 
for bronzer, I brought this sample that I had of the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer. It is a matte bronzer, of course. It smells super yummy, and that's fun. It was a nice bronzer. I super liked it. I really enjoyed it. I would be very, very in love with it if it weren't for the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzers. They are very similar and obviously a lot less expensive. And for me, they're a bit better of a shade because I can get their light bronzer. But this was fine and I liked it a lot. It blends out really nicely, but that other one exists and it's less expensive. So I wouldn't see me picking this up unless you like the shade better. Maybe you'd want it. Maybe I'd pick it up if I stumbled across it on like an awesome sale. But I like that Physicians Formula one just as well. Also matte, also blends really nicely. For eyeshadow, I brought this ColourPop shadow, shadow in Wattles and I liked it a lot. It was the first time I really used it much. And I just used this by itself, like one color real quick all over the eyes. I liked it a lot. I don't think it would show much if I added it to my eye look right now but it was a really easy, easy, quick, one shadow, pretty look. Definitely a favorite of mine now. I brought other eye stuff and just didn't even end up using it because that was so easy and fast. So like I brought this Tarte Eye Architect, which has shadow and liner. And so I thought that would be a good combo, but I didn't even find myself using the shadow because I was using the waddles. But I did still use the black eyeliner. It's a black waterproof eyeliner. And I also used this cheap Pop Beauty Coal black pencil because it's just a teeny tiny pencil. And I also brought one of those in nude for the lower waterline. This is the Bare Minerals. It's a loose powder shadow. It is in the shade Minx. And it is black, but it has some really pretty sparkliness to it. And it is just my go-to for black shadow. I use it for lining. If I am using black shadow in a look, I'll use it too. It is just like the best black shadow. I've had it forever. It's lasted me forever. Um, I love it. For mascara, I brought the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara, which I hadn't really tried before, but everybody loves it. So I wanted to give it a try and it was what I used for a week. And it is a really great mascara. It is what I use today. I would say it is your classic mascara. Um, maybe more volumizing than lengthening, but still does some lengthening. I would say, I mean, my like classic is, I wouldn't say that it's like a spidery look. It does not get clumpy at all. It does not look feathery though, either. It is just like your very classic, perfect mascara look. For that reason, maybe it might lean a little boring. I think for me, maybe that might interfere with it having like a permanent number one place for me because I can maybe like them. Um, I like it when they get really lengthy and feathery. I can also like it when it gets kind of clumpy and spidery and cool. And this one is just a beautiful beauty day kind of mascara if I'm actually trying to look pretty rather than letting myself look stupid because I want clumpy lashes then I would go for this. I have heard that the Essence Lash Princess the green one is a dupe for this and I'm very interested now to try it out but I haven't tried it out before. I have the other lash princess mascara. That's it. That was what I brought. A pretty basic easy makeup look. I would say that I put it on really quickly and that it never looked too made up but made me look, it you know, made me feel comfortable and made up enough and yeah those are some product recommendations. I hope that was helpful. I hope you like these and bye 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 bye.